efficient, safe, a vertical clean fuel. It is one of our most important energy resources. With 71% of the annual supply of natural gas being consumed by Western industrialized nations, who possess only 28% of the gas resources, a major expansion in the trade of natural gas is developing between the main areas of supply and the industrialized nations. This trade, which is largely between continents, has created an urgent need for new large tankers, specially designed to carry LNG, natural gas in its liquefied form. In 1968, General Dynamics focused its attention on the deepening energy shortages and recognized in the need for LNG tankers a new opportunity for its expansive shipbuilding facilities at Quincy, Massachusetts. After studying and evaluating the several LNG containment systems available for ocean transport of LNG, we selected and subsequently acquired the U.S. license for the Moss Rosenberg Spherical LNG Containment System. During the following years, General Dynamics undertook a multi-million dollar project to refine and adapt this advanced concept to production. General Dynamics is a vigorous, modern, high-technology corporation employing over 60,000 people. On any given day, we are dealing with problems of space, natural resources, telecommunications, and transportation. With sales at the $2 billion a year level, we design and manufacture aircraft, space systems, tactical missiles, electronics, data products, telecommunications systems and components surface ships, and nuclear submarines. We're the second largest producer of asbestos in the free world, the largest producer of lime in the United States, and one of the nation's top ten coal producers. To assure that the design of the LNG ship meets the highest standards of reliable operation, General Dynamics brought to bear its broad corporate resources. Our conveyor division, with 20 years' experience in the cryogenic field, evaluated the cargo containment system and further improved the sphere's structural configuration. They also assisted in the design of the cargo handling system and evaluated alternative insulation methods. Our electronics division helped in the design of the cryogenic instrumentation. And at our electric boat division, engineers analyzed the structural design of the cargo containment system. In September of 1972, General Dynamics became the first United States company to sign firm contracts to build LNG ships. And our shipbuilding division at Quincy, Massachusetts, opened a new chapter in American shipbuilding progress. Since late in the 19th century, Quincy has been one of the leading shipbuilding centers in the United States. More than 500 ships have been built on this 181-acre site. Ships like the steel-hulled, seven-masted schooner Thomas W. Lawson. The world's first nuclear-powered surface ship, USS Long Beach. And the supertanker of the 60s, the Manhattan, which completed the historic transit of the Northwest Passage. In 1964, when General Dynamics acquired and reopened the Quincy facility, we essentially laid a new shipyard over the old installing the most advanced techniques and processes for modern ship construction. From 1964 through 1973, the yard delivered 24 ships. These included four nuclear submarines, six fleet replenishment oilers, two ammunition ships, two submarine tenders, and four landing ship docks. Three giant Apollo tracking ships were also delivered to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. In 1970, with the passage of the Merchant Marine Act, we found new commercial markets in merchant shipbuilding. And that year, we laid the keel for the first of three revolutionary barge-carrying Seabees, the Dr. Likes. These complex Likes cargo ships reflect the high sophistication that our marine technology at Quincy has attained. Now, the LNG tanker, as our primary shipbuilding product, affords Quincy the opportunity to make new advances in the building of quality ships. This is General Dynamics' design for its series of new, identical LNG carriers. 
The first three of these ships will be used on the East Coast Gas LNG project to transport gas from Algeria to the United States. Five additional ships are to carry LNG from Indonesia to Japan. This will be the first recent use of unsubsidized U.S.-built vessels in foreign-to-foreign -foreign trade. These ships will be among the largest liquefied natural gas carriers afloat. Each will carry 125,000 cubic meters of liquefied gas, enough gas to heat a city of one million for a month. Length, 936 feet. Beam. 143 feet. Draft, 36 feet. Displacement, 94,600 tons. Rugged, reliable, simple to operate. Equipped with the most advanced cryogenic system and the most sophisticated safety systems available. It all begins here with the spherical cargo containment system. These aluminum alloy spheres, each 120 feet in diameter, are very similar to land storage cryogenic tanks. Insulated to perform like giant coal chests, they contain the liquefied gas at a temperature of minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit. The unique structural strength predictability of the sphere makes it the most reliable container for shipboard use. The tank configuration has enabled us to accurately predict the stress and dynamic response of the cargo containers under actual operating conditions. Detnorsky Veritas, who pioneered in the application of finite element techniques to the structural analysis of ships, has an unmatched reputation regarding the correlation of finite element calculated stresses and measured full-scale ship stresses. This type of analysis, the most reliable used in ship structures, was used to evaluate the ship's hull and cargo tank stresses and their interaction. A thick equatorial Y ring is the only stiffener necessary in the tank structure. It joins the tank to the aluminum and steel support skirt. This is the only component not readily amenable to classical stress analysis. Much attention has been devoted to the Y ring detail whose final configuration was determined after extensive photoelastic tests of alternative designs. This configuration was then analyzed using a very fine mesh finite element model, which corroborated photoelastic findings. In addition to these tests, we also conducted a fracture mechanics or leak before failure study to evaluate possible crack propagation in the structure under actual stress distributions. The study concluded that even if a crack did occur, it would not propagate and cause leakage, even over several ship lifetimes. Pitch and roll amplitudes in the heaviest seas have been determined and taken into consideration in the overall system design. Pressure distribution on the hull structure and acceleration on the tanks were determined not only from empirical data, but also by rigorous six degree of freedom analysis of ship motions using observed wave spectrum data for the North Atlantic. The American Bureau of Shipping independently analyzed hull tank interaction and tank and tank support stresses using their own finite element program. Excellent agreement was obtained among all the different methods of analysis. The results of these extensive studies have enabled us to obtain full certification of the ship design by the American Bureau of Shipping and approval by the United States Coast Guard, the ultimate authorities on the safe operation of a ship in port and at sea. They have reviewed all phases of the spherical containment system, and their requirements are incorporated in the ship. The confidence our design has achieved with these regulatory agencies has resulted in the elimination of a full secondary leak barrier and permission to load the spheres to 99.5% of their capacity rather than the usual 98%. The cargo spheres are constructed of a tough aluminum alloy, originally developed as armor protection for military hardware. The 5083-0 alloy we are using has ideal properties for cryogenic applications. We evaluated the fatigue and fracture properties of the aluminum to thicknesses up to 8 inches. Reliability has been the key consideration in selection of the cargo containment system and all other parts of the ship. 
For a single idle day for one of these ships can cost over $63,000. In one year, that becomes over $23 million. The basic simplicities of this ship make it no more complicated to maintain than smaller conventional vessels. The ship has complete navigation equipment for accurately locating and controlling its position under all operating conditions. A 2200 horsepower bow thruster, the largest to be installed to date, helps make precise docking and undocking possible and assists in maneuvering in tight or congested areas. The ship also has an automatic computer-controlled collision avoidance system, the most sophisticated and advanced navigation device available. As with any ship, the possibility of collision or grounding cannot be overlooked. Here, another advantage of the spherical tanks is apparent. Tank damage is statistically much less likely than with prismatic tanks, because the tough sphere is in close proximity to the outer hull at only three points. Perhaps the greatest fear of any sailor is the possibility of fire aboard ship. So, the fire control system of our LNG ship is the most effective available. A fully automatic sprinkler system protects all vital parts of the ship. Dry powder is recognized as the most effective medium for extinguishing gas fires. Individually operated dry powder fire stations provide overlapping coverage for every area where a liquefied gas fire could occur. Each tank can be isolated by shutoff valves, and the insulation of the cryogenic system doubles as a thermal retardant to confine any fire that might occur. The cargo instrumentation and control system, designed and developed by experts at General Dynamics Electronics Division, monitors critical temperatures, pressures, tank levels, and methane gas concentrations, and automatically sounds alarms in the event of abnormal conditions. Built-in safety features in the tanks themselves, such as independent relief valves, will correct pressure levels to prevent critical occurrences. To further reduce hazards and ensure safe operation, LNG ships are inspected frequently. The tanks are warmed up, aerated, and visually inspected from the inside. These operations can be accomplished while the ship steams from its last unloading port to the inspection and service facilities thus conserving time. The spherical tanks can also be inspected from the outside space around the tank, and insulation repairs can be made without violating the ship's bottom structure. The tanks can be dried and inerted, purged with natural gas and cooled down, ready to receive cargo while the ship is in transit to the loading terminal. The cargo handling system can load or unload the entire LNG cargo within 12 hours. Each tank is equipped with twin cargo pumps, either one of which can empty the sphere. Another, and possibly the most important feature of the spherical system, is its inherent ability to withstand internal pressure. In an extraordinary case where the ship is not allowed to unload, or the terminal cannot receive the cargo, Pressure can be allowed to build up in the tanks without danger, allowing time for remedial action or for moving the ship out to sea where the pressure can be safely relieved. Insulation limits the boil off rate to one quarter of one percent per day under hot conditions. During normal operations, for example between Algeria and the U.S. East Coast, or between Indonesia and Japan, the rate may actually be only about 0.125 percent per day. Part of the reason for the low boil-off is also attributable to the spherical tank. It has 35% less surface area than a flat-sided tank of the same volume. Whatever boil-off does occur is not wasted. Boil-off gas is channeled to the boilers and helps power the turbines that drive the ship. There are depth restrictions in many ports around the world. We allowed generous margins in the weight estimate of the ship so that the actual loaded draft of the ship is four inches less than the design draft of 36 feet. Fuel consumption and boil off during a 3,000 mile voyage reduces draft by one half foot, making arrival draft very close to 35 feet. For a 6,000 mile trip, arrival draft will be less than 35 feet. 
Ship owners have confidence in a spherical containment system. Sixteen such ships in the 125,000 cubic meter class have been ordered. To prepare for this large shipbuilding program, General Dynamics has invested more than $40 million at Quincy in shipyard modifications and new machinery. This major renovation and expansion of facilities has provided us with two new building basins, each 900 feet long, and a giant Goliath crane with a span of 380 feet over two assembly basins and a lifting capacity of 1,200 tons. It is the largest crane in the United States. The crane is used to lower major structural assemblies and the 800-ton aluminum spherical LNG tanks into the ships. The huge aluminum cargo spheres, 120 feet in diameter, are being built here at our new sphere manufacturing facility near Charleston, South Carolina. General Dynamics is investing an additional $56 million in this modern plant, which, when in full production, will be delivering one sphere by barge to Quincy every two and one-half weeks. At Quincy, advanced shipbuilding methods efficiently process steel from unformed plates into the finished product. Our mechanized standard parts process and panel line, installed in 1973, is the beginning of this transformation. First, automatic flame cutting machines cut plates to exact dimensions for panels and into strips for angles and T-beams. Guided by pre-programmed numerical tapes, automatic burning machines work with mathematical precision to cut the more elaborately contoured shapes for webs and frames from which the ship will be formed. After the plates have been cut to shape, they are reinforced with angles and T-beams, or stiffeners. This combination, called a stiffened panel, is the basic structural element of the ship. The finished panels then are formed into modules, three-dimensional units that are employed like building blocks to construct hulls and superstructure. The massive modular assemblies, weighing from 50 to 150 tons each, are transferred by the self-propelled 200-ton transporter and then mated to the ship's structure as entire sections. With this production line approach, small teams of men are assigned to specific workstations, doing a single job recurrently, and efficiency is improved. The completed modules are moved to one of the most advanced blast and paint facilities in the shipbuilding industry designed to automatically clean the steel and to provide a controlled environment for painting. Here, the modules are blasted by high-velocity steel shot, removing all scale, paint, dirt, grease, and oil. After blasting, the modules are painted in this facility, climatically controlled to speed drying of even the most sophisticated new finishes, like epoxy and plastic paint. Once cleaned and painted, Many of these units are pre-outfitted with the appropriate piping, electrical equipment, ducting, and machinery before being installed on the ship. Modular construction, pre-outfitted assemblies, huge lifting capacities, all of these techniques support our basic philosophy of a modern approach to shipbuilding. An LNG tanker comes closer to life as each new assembly is hoisted into position, aligned precisely, and welded to the total structure. Unit by unit, a ship emerges. When the mid-body and stern section of the hull are completed, the vessel is floated out to a larger assembly basin, where the bow section and a fully pre-outfitted deck house will be lowered into position by the Goliath crane and joined to the hull structure. These giant vessels, safe, reliable, and efficient, specialized in design and purpose, products of General Dynamics technology, represent a significant advance in the art of shipbuilding. Their purpose is tremendously important, for in the international transportation of LNG, these revolutionary ships are a vital link. <laughs>